higher prices. This is why the great Nobel Prize winning economist Milton Friedman said inflation is everywhere and always a monetary phenomenon. You know, in the last 300 years of world history, there have been, th there have been 750 currencies and almost all of them have vanished, and almost all of them for the same reason. Prime ministers, presidents, kings, queens, emperors created cash to fund their lavish spending, debauching the currencies and forcing people to look for other ways to pay their bills. And that is precisely what is happening right now. Central bank money printing, backstopping Justin Trudeau's irresponsible spending. Our common sense plan is to do exactly the opposite. We're going to cut waste and cap spending to get rid of the, inf the deficits that have necessitated the money printing in the first place. Here's how we'll do it. One, we'll root out waste. We'll start by getting rid of the $54 million Rivecan app. The police are investigating it. You hear that? Justin Trudeau won't say if he'll cooperate with the cops this time. But they're investigating after he spent 50 more, 4 million of your dollars on an app that didn't work, that we didn't need, that violated your rights and could have been designed for about 50 grand. As a lark, two IT workers in Ottawa bought a few boxes of pizza and cases of beer and as a joke, they redesigned the Arrive Can app from scratch in a weekend. And it didn't cost $54 million. My plan is to take that app that they designed, send it to Trudeau, and call it the Resign Can app. <laughs> then there's a $35 billion infrastructure bank that six years into its mandate has not completed a single solitary infrastructure Project. They have managed to pay out bonuses to their executives, and the way they operate, it's not a real bank. What they do is they give loan guarantees, which means that if the big construction company comes in over budget, then they get bailed out by the taxpayer. That's not the free market. In the market, it risk and reward go together. If business delivers on time, on budget, they make money. That's great. But if they go over budget, then they have to pay the bills. They don't get to pass that on to everybody else. We're going to bring in the real market principles by getting rid of this corporate welfare bank. I will ax the infrastructure bank. Oh, he says the green fund. Well, you know what? We're going to give you an apple for that. That was a good point you make. There you go. Here's your free apple. There you go. The green fund, the green fund, a billion dollar green fund. It's going to save the environment. Well, now one of the top officials was caught on tape saying that it was a money for nothing scam, gross incompetence, compared it to the sponsorship scandal. And now we find out that the chair of the Green Fund gave $200,000 of your money to her company. Can you imagine that? A billion dollar fund. We will get rid of the Justin Trudeau Green Fund that just puts green in the pockets of his friends. Oh, there's a suggestion. We could save a billion dollars by defunding the CBC. <laughs> I don't think they came today. They don't come. Why do they stop coming to my rallies? I'm going to start taking it personally, I think. <laughs> uh, well, somebody's paying them with your money, that's for sure. They don't want to bite the hand that feeds them, that's for sure. But listen, we're also going to go through the bureaucracy and cut out more and more of the waste so that we can leave more money in your pockets. We'll bring in a common sense dollar for dollar law, which will run the public finances the way small businesses and single moms run their budget. Very simple. Every time the government brings in a new dollar of spending, it'll have to find a dollar of savings to pay for it. Right? The, it works. 
The Americans did this in the 1990s, and they managed to balance their budget, pay off $400 billion of debt, but as soon as the law lapsed, they went right back into deficit and haven't emerged ever since, which proves that politicians need legal limits on their spending. Here's why. The, they need to be capped. The only way to discipline spending is to put the scarcity back inside the government and ensure that politicians and bureaucrats have to make the same common sense trade-offs that you make in your life every single day. This does not necessarily mean that you will live with less services. It means that we will get better value for the money we actually spend. So, It is better value for money, and that's what we're going to do across the government. Value for money. Common sense. And then we're going to get the central bank back to its central mandate, which is not to fund political spending, but to protect the purchasing power of our dollar. When you create cash, as they did, and how much did the money supply go, by the way? 32%. Who is there's a guy who's way over there. I don't know if we're going to be able to get an apple to him. All right. Somebody give somebody pass the apple back. Pass it one at a time. I don't want anybody to get a black eye. That would be that would be a bad media story, eh? The CBC would cover that, I think. Yeah. There he is. Give that man a round of applause. Oh. You look at the increase in housing prices on a chart and you insert the date in April of 2020 when the central bank started printing money, you see that housing prices shot up right at that point because it flooded the financial system with easy cash that was lent out to well-connected investors who then bid up housing prices. It meant that those with the assets, the billionaire class, got richer. Yesterday we found that the billionaires, the 0.1%, actually increased their wealth dramatically year over year while the poorest people saw their take-home pay go down by $1,400. Why is this? Inflation always does the same thing. It helps the super rich. It's a tax on the poor and the working class. Why? The super rich are protected with assets like fancy art, like land holdings, like fancy watches, like stocks. They all go up with inflation, but the working class sees the purchasing power of their paycheck go down. It is a major transfer of wealth from the have-nots to the have-yachts. <laughs> It's the worst and most immoral tax, so I will get the central bank back to its core mandate, which is protecting the purchasing power of our money, not printing cash and causing inflation. Thank you. And there will be no central bank digital currency. Right? It's a war on work. So a common sense conservative government led by Pierre Polyev will reform the clawbacks and cut income taxes so you bring home more of each dollar you earn and hard work once again pays off. Yes. Speaking of bringing home powerful paychecks, we're going to make sure that our brilliant immigrant professionals can take an exam to prove they're qualified and get to work in the nursing and doctor professions. Ninety, you know, eighty-five percent of Filipino nurses actually can't work in Canada because they have no way of proving their qualification. In the states, they can take a test in two weeks and get to work. We in Canada do not have a national testing standard for the professions the way we do for the trades. We have the red seal in the trades and have had it for 70 years. We still have nothing like that in the professions. So the gatekeeping bureaucracies shut people out of opportunities. Even some of our own Canadian-born kids who go to study in the States or Ireland or Scotland or Australia, they come back, they can't work for us because they can't get licensed. How about a common sense merit-based tests that will allow them to prove they are qualified so we can have those Filipino and other nurses and more doctors serving our communities, right? <laughs> and
And it's time for the NDP in this province to end the vaccine mandate so the nurses can go back. Yeah. That, that was his idea. He gets an apple for that. There you go. Good catch. Thank you. We have a private member's bill on the House of Commons, in fact, that would ban, that would have banned all federal COVID mandates from returning. I'm disappointed to tell you that every single NDP member of Parliament voted to keep the mandates in place. Even now. Even now. Remember that the next time you're in an emergency room and you can't see a doctor or nurse. Remember that your NDP member of parliament voted against allowing people to work as doctors and nurses for a simple personal, personal medical decision. This is outrageous. We have to get the gatekeepers out of the way so that we can earn more powerful paychecks. That means developing our resources here in Canada rather than importing them from abroad. Justin Trudeau's law, C-69, now found to be unconstitutional, has meant that of the 18 proposed natural gas liquefaction facilities, many of which might have been built here in B.C., none of them have been completed. He said there was no business case when the German Chancellor and the Japanese Prime Minister asked for some of our gas. Trudeau said, why don't you go call the Kremlin, ask Putin. He'll send you all the gas you need to fund his war, because we don't want the money here, he said. No business case. Nobody told the Americans who built seven natural gas plants in the last eight years. Nobody told the Qataris who've doubled their production and just signed a 3.5 million ton per year deal to supply France with gas, and they're using that money to help fund Hamas in the Middle East. And then they want to, then Trudeau says we should all be driving electric cars. And where are we going to get the materials to put in those cars? China, exactly. Remember, he said he loves the basic Chinese communist dictatorship. He wasn't kidding. No wonder they called him Little Potato over there, right? You know, we have the ability, we have the sixth biggest supply of lithium right here in Canada. We didn't mine a tablespoon of the stuff last year because it takes 25 years to get a mine approved. He says he wants more clean electricity. Well, we have the biggest supply of uranium on planet Earth. We could have nuclear power plants that would supply that energy. That natural gas, is we have a huge advantage in that as well. We have 1,300 trillion cubic feet of this stuff right beneath our feet. Shorter shipping distances to Asia and Europe from North America than they do in the United States and we have clean hydro with, to, with which to power those liquefaction plants. And you know what else we have? We have cold weather, which is what you need to liquefy gas. You have to turn the gas into a liquid. That takes cold. It's cold in Canada. You guys don't know anything about that. You have no idea. You're all looking at me strained. Cold? What's that? It's so cold in Ottawa. In Ottawa, it got so cold last winter, Justin Trudeau was seen with his hands in his own pockets. <laughs> so here's my common sense plan. We're going to repeal the entry energy law C-69. We're going to approve mines in 18 months, not 25 years. We're going to approve nuclear power plants to supply clean energy onto our grid, and we're going to sign off on natural gas liquefaction plants to cool that gas down to minus 161 degrees, ship it to Asia to replace dirty coal fire plants, ship it to Europe to replace Putin's dirty gas, and turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. Bring it home! 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 
And speaking of homes, we're going to actually have homes that you can afford again. Now, why are housing costs so expensive in Canada? It's because we have the fewest homes per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. It has gotten so crazy. House, it now takes 25 years to save up for a down payment. It takes 25 years to save up for a down payment for the average house in Toronto. It used to be 25 years to pay off the average house in Toronto. In fact, Toronto is now the worst housing bubble in the world. Demographia says Vancouver is the third most expensive market anywhere on planet Earth. The OECD says that we have the biggest mortgage debt of any country in the G7. This colliding with higher interest rates. It's gotten so bad that you can actually buy a 20-bedroom castle in Scotland for a lower price than a two-bedroom in Kitchener. That's a fact. It's a fact. That's how insane it is. Now why? We have more land, more lumber, and labor than anyone else. It should be cheap to own a home. The answer is government gatekeepers block housing construction. It, it's the permit. The, you know, what do you think is the biggest cost input for a new home built in Vancouver? Is it land, labor, lumber? Oh, it's government. It's government. This guy said government. He gets an apple for that. It's actually government. It's government adds $1.3 million to the cost of every newly built home in Vancouver. $1.3 million. Here's my common sense plan to build homes and not bureaucracy. One, I will require that as a condition of getting federal infrastructure money, every municipality boost home building by 15% per year. If they beat the target by 10%, they'll get 10% more money. If they miss it by 10%, they'll get 10% less money. They will be paid like realtors. They will be paid commission. So some of the mayors say, well, what about my place? If we don't get the houses built, then we're going to lose money and I won't have as many bureaucrats. It's like, well, maybe you go into the permitting office, maybe you move your debt into the permitting office and have big screens on the wall that say this is how many people are on hold, this is how many permits are overdue, this is how many houses that are waiting to be built, and you get the bureaucrats delivering the outcome. Because when I'm Prime Minister, we're going to be paying for results, not for bureaucracy. You have to get things done. Speaking of that, Speaking of that, CMHC is the federal bureaucracy that approves financing for apartments. They're supposed to approve it in 60 days. It often takes two years. My common sense law, which I've introduced in the parliament, says if they don't hit the 60-day standard within six months, I'm cutting the executive's pay in half. And if they don't hit the target within a year, they're all fired. I think we're going to call it the Welcome to the Real World Act, right? That's what happens if you're a plumber or a barber or a waitress. But in the government, it's the opposite. They get bonuses when they screw up. That's going to change when I'm Prime Minister. We're going to approve financing quickly, get the apartments built so that people can put a roof overhead. We're going to get that bureaucracy out of the way. We're going to sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land and turn it into housing. We'll take the proceeds of the sale to reduce the debt. And you know something? It warms my heart to think of a beautiful, to think of the beautiful family pulling up into their wonderful, in their, in their, their U-Haul to move into their wonderful new home in the former headquarters of the CBC. <laughs> And we're going to get, of course, by getting rid of the carbon tax, we'll be reducing the cost of bringing the building materials to the site. We're also going to support our trades again. We need more boots, not just more suits. Do we have any tradesmen here? Right on. The men and women who build our country. 
We're going to bring in the common sense conservative law, tax fairness for traveling trades workers. Right now, a CEO can write off the cost of his private jet, but a pipe fitter from Timmins can't write off the cost of traveling to Fort Mac to work on a pipeline. We're going to bring in the ability for every single trades worker to write off the full cost of food, transportation, and accommodation to go to work anywhere in Canada. Yeah. And we're going to make, work with the Red Seal Council to make more of the trades education available to our teenagers as they understand that there is dignity and a great income, a powerful paycheck working in the trades, building our homes. Absolutely. <laughs> And we want those homes to be in safe neighborhoods again. We need safe neighborhoods. Is it safe around here these days? No. Crazy, eh? Yeah, free everything but no free treatment, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's very tragic what is unfolded and entirely predictable. It starts with the criminal catch and release system Trudeau passed into law with C-75. Right now, Right now, a criminal can be arrested and released before the police officer even does the paperwork. The cops call it, they see crimes and they don't even arrest them oftentimes because they say the guy will be back out on the street in a couple of hours anyway. What's the point in arresting him? There was one cop in Toronto who told me the other day he caught a guy with an illegal gun. The guy said, uh, he said, well, why, why did you make it so easy to catch me? He said, I, I don't even put an effort into avoid being caught anymore because the consequences are so mild. It's more hassle to try and avoid you than just to get caught, arraigned, and put out on bail the next day. Here's my common sense plan. We will make anyone who has a long rap sheet of violent or serious offenses ineligible for bail, parole, or house arrest. In other words, jail, not bail for repeat violent offenders. And then the drug crisis. Well, let's remember how this crisis started in the first place. We had pharmaceutical companies, they are gangsters, thugs and corrupt pharmaceutical gangsters, marketed what was then called OxyContin into the North American market. And they knew exactly what they were doing. So they're paying the same companies who caused the crisis more of our tax dollars to keep giving out more of the drugs. And it, here's the problem. The drugs don't even keep them high anymore. So they sell those drugs to kids. And they use the profits to buy fentanyl, which is causing the massive overdose crisis all across our country today. My friends, this insanity has got to stop, and it will when I am Prime Minister. <laughs> We're going to stop giving out tax-funded drugs. We're going to ban heroin, crack, other illicit fentanyl, and other drugs to get that off our streets. We're going to take the money we save, and we're going to invest in beautiful treatment and rehabilitation facilities. I think of the, inc the incredible Oak a foundation in Winnipeg where a father who was a sportscaster lost his son to an overdose, opened up a beautiful facility where they offer counseling, detox, physical fitness, yoga, sweat lodges for First Nations. They give them a job plan. They're building a transitional apartment right next door so the addicts can live there as they bridge back. They can come back in for more counseling, get in a workout, maybe even mentor incoming addicts. This is the hopeful way, the common sense way, that we can give everybody a second chance at life and bring our loved ones home drug free. Yeah. Now, I said I'd have a dollar for dollar law, so how are we going to pay for it all? We are going to sue the corrupt pharmaceutical companies and recover the billions of dollars and make them pay for what they did.
And speaking of big pharma, we are going to oppose the liberal NDP law that effectively bans natural health products. Have you seen this? Unbelievable. The pharmaceutical company has been pushing for this for years. They finally got it into the liberal budget. It basically applies massive regulatory costs and fees on anyone producing or selling natural health products here in Canada. Costs that obviously small producers can never afford and therefore people won't be able to use those products and they'll all be forced to do what? Buy more big farmers medicines, make them more profit. But you know what I find most interesting about this? It's not the Liberals would do this. They've long sold themselves out to powerful interests like that. It's not even that the NDP would do this. We see what the NDP does every day just for the privilege of being close to Justin Trudeau's power, just to touch that ring. <laughs> what blows me away is that the Green Party voted against natural health products. Elizabeth May. Is anybody here from Elizabeth May's riding? Who's ready to fire Elizabeth May and replace her with a common sense conservative? We're going to put you back in charge of your own personal medical decisions by repealing this law and allowing our natural health products to be back on the market and allow you to apply your wisdom as to what you want because it is crazy to, to legalize crack and ban herbal tea, right? <laughs> like their approach on guns, right? <laughs> they have no problem allowing repeat violent offenders on the street, but they want, to j they want to take away the legitimately and lawfully acquired property of hunters and sports shooters who have already been vetted by the RCMP and passed the most rigorous testing. The, all the data shows that anyone with a possession and acquisition license, or more to it, an RPAL, are the least likely people to commit crime. And the reason for that, right? Protect our hunters. The reason for that is very simple. Because if you're going to go and rob a bank or shoot up a neighborhood, you don't stop to get your license along the way, right? <laughs> Criminals don't get licenses. They take in illegal guns from the United States of America. My common sense plan repeals the ban on your hunting rifle or your lawfully acquired property. I'm going to do the opposite. Instead, I'm going to put the money into reinforcing the border to keep the illegal guns and drugs out and put the violent criminals in jail. But here's why. The reason, the reason they want to take away your hunting rifle is because that is consistent with their ideology. Justin Trudeau and parties like his have only two principles. One, the government should control the people, and he should control the government. That's it. Now, the worst, the most disgusting thought to someone like Justin Trudeau is, is that you might be able to go and harvest a living off the land without the government involved. They can't even tax the, the, the meat that comes from your venison, right? It's scary to them that someone might be able to harvest a living without having the state look over their shoulder, tell them what to do and how to do it. Everything he does is about control. Everything he does. Controlling your money, controlling what you put into your body, controlling what you think and what you see online, controlling what is taught to your kids about gender and sexuality. It is all about control. That is everything, and, and to, to achieve that control, he divides to conquer. Always inventing a new villain. 
to scare you away. If you are afraid of your neighbor, you might forget you can't pay your rent or feed your kids. That's the classic strategy of divide and conquer. Well, we're going to replace divide and conquer with unite for freedom. Bring home our freedom. Right. Uniting for freedom means that we will repeal the censorship law, C-11. <laughs> Uniting for freedom means we'll repeal the law that's taken your news off of social media, C-18. Uniting for Freedom means no mandatory digital ID. <laughs> Uniting for Freedom means banning all of my ministers from any involvement in the World Economic Forum. Uniting for freedom means telling Justin to Justin Trudeau to butt out and let parents decide what to teach their kids about sexuality and gender. And uniting for freedom means pulling back the money that we're sending abroad to foreign dictatorships, terrorists, and multinational organizations, and putting that money into rebuilding our military and supporting our troops. Most of all, it means giving opportunities and dignity to the brave men and women who are veterans in this country, who protected our freedom and stand up, stood up for us. They fought for us. We'll fight for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up here, my friend. There we go. Give this man a big round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you very much to that gentleman and to all those who have served our country. Now, what I'm proposing is just a different philosophical approach than what we have from the NDP and Justin Trudeau. You see, well, you see, what about seniors? We, we will put seniors back in charge of their lives. We will lower their cost of food, gas, rent, and everything else. We will honor our seniors. We'll stand up for every Canadian. But the philosophy, the philo philosophical difference is this. Justin Trudeau and the NDP believe that they're better at deciding for you than you are at deciding for yourself. The reason that they don't want you to have the freedom of choice in all of these areas is because their philosophy is that there's a special group of angels who are just more enlightened and virtuous than the rest of us. And they're able to use this wisdom to run all of our lives for us, right? Isn't that wonderful? Right. <laughs> they say that the ordinary people are not able to make their own decisions or run their own lives. We need experts for that, after all. Looking down from the tower, we have these extraordinary people here, too. The waitress who carries eight plates on a tray and serves ten tough customers at once, works a 12-hour shift only to come home and teach her kid math, and balances her budget on a minimum wage salary. She is not ordinary. She is extraordinary, my friend. The farmer 
who takes food, to, to, who masters the science of sky and soil to bring food from his field to your fork is not ordinary. He is extraordinary. The electrician. The electrician who captures lightning and runs it through a copper wire to illuminate this room is not ordinary. He is extraordinary. These extraordinary people deserve to be masters and not servants in their home and native land. These are the common people, the great common people who are not famous. Their names do not appear in headlines when they die. No words are spoken of them in Parliament. But when they walk through heaven's gates, the trumpets sound for them. And a beautiful song goes out from the angels. There goes greatness because God knew that they carried their friends, their family, and their nation on their shoulders. My friends, this is the common sense of the common people united for our common home, your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home!